they gave Ross Ulbricht double life. I don't know if you're aware of this. They gave him double life. For what? And what I said, for, for having a good idea. For having a good idea and exercising it well, making it happen. This guy was not a mastermind in any sense uh, that we normally use the word. He was not the head of some large crime family, some operation with extensive you know, tentacles uh, in all levels of government uh, and, and other life. He was treated as that though and made to be that in the media. But essentially, he was just a kid with a good idea and he was naive and it was obvious and it all comes through that way. And all the trouble that he had was always at the prompting uh, of, of some federal agent as one of these task forces giving him trouble. He did not have the kind of complexity of criminal associations to be this evil person. But that's beside the point. They gave him double life, all right? Ben Dinio said, did they give, what did they give Noriega? They gave him 25 years and they sent the Marines in after that guy. We invaded another country for Noriega and we brought him back and he got 25 years and they give this kid double life. And to me that only, that just speaks to the, ma you know, the magnitude of the problem in their eyes. They're so scared of what the internet and this disintermediation of authority and control and observation means that they must set this kind of example. And the judge said no less, right? She said, look, this is going to be a clear message to anyone else to never try this again. Uh, the judge doesn't understand how these things work. This is an invitation to try it again. This is also an invitation to kind of uh, uh, put on the mantle of a kind of posthumous jihadist mentality, right? Where we are now, you know, we are, we are now dead men we who undergo this project, and we will undergo this project, and now we will have a kind of radicalization in our mentalities, already assuming that we are defeated in the fact, and that we must proceed with a kind of suicidal abandon, a kind of deadliness in, in, our, in our intentionality, which before was not necessary, but has now been made so. So the kind of, the way these projects will now direct themselves, because we all know they won't stop, and people will not stop. She has invited a deadlier, more suicidal element to the kind of code making, and the type of personality which would undertake this type of work. Whereas beforehand, she had someone who was naive and idealistic and who actually believed that he could make a different world. That stuff gets put in prison for double life. That mentality gets put in prison for double life. You think they're going to let you be some kind of martyr for the drug war? No. They're going to make you a monster. And because the rules of the game are so fierce and so deadly, you have to be fierce and deadly. And so they will have made monsters of all those people who are to come, and they don't even know. And we will be monsters, right? Like, they, they will have to be, because that's the stakes. This is going to get much more interesting, much more deadly, and they've raised the stakes, right? This is, this is a kind of escalation. Because they punished the moral man. Supremely ethical. That's my argument. The fact that he considered assassination of a, of a government agent at some, at some pain doesn't change the fact that he was trying to make an ethical decision. And indeed was serious about trying to make that decision. Ethics doesn't by itself have a universalist bent that says, well, all killing no matter what is bad. We'll tell that to the, the bombers in, in, the, in Eastern Europe, right? I mean, you know. We are, we are dealing with the vestiges of a Kantian morality which says that well, only the supreme monopolization of authority can ultimately use violence and only legitimately justifiably use violence. Violence isn't a, something for you to be able to use. Well, this guy was faced with a decision. He was painted into a corner, corner like, a, like an animal, with the loss of either his freedom or the freedom of his suppliers, and he had to make a decision. Do I snuff out this guy and protect this thing, this thing that I've built? Maybe he was selfish, maybe he wasn't, but he had to try to make an ethical decision. Just because it was a matter of life and death doesn't uh, like overrule the fact that he was still trying to struggle with ethics. But they didn't allow him that. They had to turn him into that. Remember, this was, this was an invented problem. They created this problem to make him into this person. Rasta went to extreme lengths to limit uh, weapons and child pornography and other things that they had determined, remember, ethically, that they believe hurt other people in its commerce and trafficking. So they tried to limit, uh, they tried to ethically govern what was for sale in that marketplace by what they called the non-aggression principle. So it was a thoroughly libertarian marketplace and they did not have time for what they thought were, you know, these more extreme ends uh, of these markets. There was some attempt at government with, with an ethics and they, they went about this at length in their own forums and, and this was enforced. Those kinds of players don't get to play anymore. It's, it's, it's full on no rules now for the most extreme people who have the, who have the political backing in, in other jurisdictions or who have the, the real grit to carry it out. So. Um, no, I believe Ross was a supremely ethical individual and his pains uh, for that, his wages for that, uh, double life.